It's New Year's Day, January the 1st, 2023, as I put out this interview, which includes a channeled message for what we can expect in the coming year from the galactic guides of my very special guest, Susan Kennard. We chat about clearing our inner traumas and blocks so as to better shine more fully, thus raising our frequency in the coming year so we can truly live the life we love and we're destined to live as part of our mission on the earth. Susan is a spiritual scientist and psychic medium who originally trained and worked in psychotherapy and trauma healing, which as many of you know, is something close to my own heart as an energy psychology and manifestation coach for the past 20 years. We discuss how Susan was called to be a medium and channel healing the collective, as she and her galactic guides call us. I'm particularly excited to be hosting her as she discusses her new book called Awaken the Light Within Your Heart, which as you will hear in the interview, she credits me with initially helping her move in the right direction to getting it published. At my instigation, she entered a Hay House competition and won a prize to have her book published by their sister company, Balboa Press. She talks about the book, which she says is encoded with healing energy from her galactic guides. And if you listen to the end, you will hear her channel her galactic guides and answer to my question, what is in store for us in 2023? I'm also thrilled to announce that my new book, The Inner Path of Writing, Make Love, Not War, with the writer within, with a forward by Dr. Joe Vitali, will be published this coming month, January 2023. Packed with wisdom from more than 20 world-class experts in writing, publishing, and personal transformation, this book will inspire authors new and experienced to overcome their inner blocks and be more productive and prosperous in their careers. Hello and welcome to the Write the Book Inside You podcast. Tips, tools and interviews for coaches and healers like you who want to write a non-fiction book to boost your visibility, clients and cash flow while making a difference. I'm your host, Carol Westmore, a multi-published author and energy psychology tapping book coach. Now let's jump into today's episode. Susan Kennard is known as a spiritual scientist, originally trained in psychology and psychotherapy, helping clear past traumas, especially from childhood. She was unexpectedly called to be a medium and a channel. Today, working with light language and galactic guides who actually helped her channel much of her book, which has just been published and which we will be talking about today. Welcome, Susan. Oh, thank you so much, Carol, for having me on your amazing podcast. <laughs> I'm you. excited to be here. Tell us the name of your book, Susan, and why you were called to write it. My book's called Awaken the Light Within Your Heart. And essentially the reason why I was called to write it is it's it's pretty much my life's work as a trauma specialist, but also a channel for spirit and source. And I was called to write it as another way to help the collective to heal themselves. I wanted people to understand that they too can heal themselves and that they have their guidance and their own GPS to help them do that. Or oh, it's essential to heal ourselves is? You know, the reason why we need to heal ourselves is so that we raise our frequency, our consciousness, and that we step more fully into the ascension pathway, which is really truly our birthright of abundance and freedom. And what I've found is that as we heal our trauma pieces, our little trauma stories, Half of them we don't even know about because they come from other times, other dimensions and our ancestral lineage. When we clear those at a deep cellular frequency level, we create amazing lives. And so I, I stumbled upon that from working with veterans many years ago in my trauma practice with PTSD. And I noticed that as they healed their, their trauma piece, their post-traumatic stress piece, 
they were able to enhance their life in ways that I could never have imagined for them. When they were, you know, a person that basically couldn't go outside the door or when they heard a sound, you know, a, a door closing or um, a car backfiring, they just went into um, their PTSD trauma space. So to see this happening so quickly, I realized that we are this true cellular frequency that holds the soul having a human experience and that when we can heal that, we are truly stepping fully into our mission. Yeah, I like that. What What is the meaning of, is that the same as a purpose? What is a mission for the, for the sure. listeners? What is their mission? Yeah, sure. So um, if you think about, you know, having something that lights you up, so, for example, you're, you know, you're recording uh, this podcast, I love what I do, and we feel it's not really like work. It's more like the thing that drives you, the thing that gets you up in the morning, the, the passion that you have. That is when you know you're on your mission. So I believe that, you know, and I've worked with my guides for many, many years now, sort of 25, nearly 30 years, and I believe that we came in at this time to really expand consciousness and to remember 100% who we are. And if we took this jacket off, which is our physical body, we'll be able to see and know exactly why we came. And yours might be different to me. You know, somebody listening to this might, might not necessarily be a particularly spiritual person. And that really doesn't matter. It's not about that. It's about living your true joy and not be um, beholden to, I should do this, I shouldn't do that. And so what I help people do is to clear the parts of them where they truly didn't believe in themselves. You know, it's like, oh, I couldn't possibly do that. Or um, I'm, you know, I, I was killed for being a healer many times before. And so I've got this fear of actually stepping out and speaking mm -hmm. the word of source or, or speaking from my heart, the truth. And so there are many levels uh, when we're thinking about our mission there are many levels that we could work on, but the key thing is living your joy. Yeah, I really understand that from what I've experienced in my own life. And for you, uh, would you say living your joy goes beyond having healed past traumas, but interacting with what you call the galactic guides? We'll come back to the book and how you came to write it, but a, a key part of it is that you accessed channeled messages yes. from them to put in the book when I said you unexpectedly were called to be a medium thinking of yourself <laughs> as as a, as a psychotherapist tell us yeah. about that moment when uh, maybe it was over a period of a year but it started with a particular moment it started with a particular awakening which felt like an incredible trauma at the time so um, I was about 27 uh, and in astrology, that is uh, around about our Saturn return, our first Saturn return. And I didn't know that at the time, of course. I had this awakening where um, a dear friend of mine called Martin, um, and I speak about him in the book, actually took his life. Now, we had previously been in a relationship. So years previously, we'd been boyfriend and girlfriend. We'd travelled a lot. He was from New Zealand. And so we'd spent a lot of time together um, having fun. And he took his life, his girlfriend let me know. And one night, a few months after that, I felt someone in the room. And this was the point where I wasn't particularly aware, wasn't particularly conscious of who I was at all. In fact, I was, you know, I was a psychotherapist, I was doing my postgraduate degree, and there was a lot of work in my life that I was focusing on in research and so on. I definitely was not thinking about other experiences, you know, um, things that go bump in the night or anything like that. And I had this feeling that someone was in the room, but I couldn't move. And I felt like someone was trying to wake me up. And it really felt, Carol, like someone had their hand on my shoulder. And I totally, totally believed that that was true. And yet I didn't feel scared in the way that I had to get out of that room. I felt that there was something that made me surprised and out of my comfort zone, but it wasn't a fear that was terrifying. A couple of few weeks later, I kept speaking about it with friends and I said, I can't sleep. I'm worried it's going to happen again. And at that time, I didn't know it was Martin. 
So someone got me a reading. They didn't tell the person anything about me. And I just had this reading and sat with this woman. And she literally told me things that Martin and I had done together, places we'd been that no one knew about. We did it on our travels and special beaches and experiences we'd had. And I said, how do you know all of that? Because nobody knows that. And she said, I've got him here with me. And then she said, he's been trying to contact you, let you know that he's okay. And then she said, he tried, you know, recently to let you know that life goes on and so on. I went, I know exactly what this is. He basically had come in to let me know. So then at the end of the reading, she held my hands and she looked at me and she said, and by the way, this is your journey. You're uh, you're walking the path of a, a master psychic. And I was like, oh, forget it. I'm a psychologist. I'm a psychotherapist. I'm not interested. And a little while later, I kept seeing opportunities for meditation. And I was doing my postgraduate degree. I was very busy, very stressed with it all. And I thought, oh, meditation, that's a good idea. And there was a lot of research, because <laughs> I was a scientist, a lot of research that says that transcendental meditation is really good. So I decided to go on the journey of TM, transcendental meditation, and my whole world opened up. And so I had that spiritual awakening. I had the opening of really feeling this energetic frequency within me, which then led me to actually explore being a researcher, being a scientist. I wanted evidence. So I basically went to the College of Psychic Studies. This is later. This wasn't all in one go. It took me a long time, but eventually I ended up training at the College of Psychic Studies. I write about that in my book. And I trained as a medium. And that is really fast tracked to tell you that mm, now. It's mm. a lot longer than that. But it led me to realize that actually we are a soul having this human experience. Mm. And we're not just this mind and body that we're led to believe. You know, that that from the medical model, um, you know, mind is separate from body. Of course, mind isn't separate from body, but neither is soul. So we have this whole beautiful system within us, which is just integrated. And our soul is talking to us via our vehicle, our body all of the time. So hence how we can listen to see what messages are coming through about what we need to heal on some level. So essentially that was, you know, the starting of it all. Um, And I ended up working on the platforms in medium, uh, as a medium um, in London. And it was, I didn't expect that. But of course, now when I look back at it, that was the starting of my public speaking career and how I started to, you know, kind of experience being in front of an audience. And I didn't know that at the time. But when I look back, of course, I was Mm. channeling. And that was what I was doing then, even though I didn't know it. So it's um, it was an incredible journey. And, and I always say to people, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> because I certainly was not open to being a medium. And those people that are waking up now are just on such a great timeline because we're being fast tracked big time. But you say, if I can do it, you can do it. But you do mm. not have a pre-arranged soul um calling you know before oh, you even yeah. came here to be a special kind of medium and channel but- oh yeah I mean I think you do but I do honestly know that our soul decided to come in and say I'm not doing this on my own I've got my team with me you know I obviously I work a lot with the galactics but we have many teams that work with us so and angelic okay. presences so so that's so, for each of us there's there's yeah. this team working with especially those of us yeah. who who are intent on making a difference in the world in some yeah. healing capacity. Yeah. But actually everyone, Carol, everyone has their team, everyone has their guidance, and everyone chose at this time to volunteer. So mm. whether we come in as um, a star seed, you know, a galactic star seed, whether we come in as somebody who gardens or who cleans the streets or who, you know, works in a shop, it doesn't matter. You know, you you have your unique reason for being here and you have your team of guidance Mm. supporting you. Absolutely everybody can tap into that team of guidance. It just depends on if you're open to it and if you've remembered who you are. Doing that by clearing the beliefs and the blocks which could uh, stop you. 
you know, it, it brings me back to my own calling uh, at the beginning of the pandemic to mm. help healers write their books rather than for me as a writer to, who's interested in healing to write yeah. more books myself, although that, that's great. But I was told you need to help others and, you know, make a bigger difference in the world. Or you call it the collective, don't you? Have a bigger mm. impact. I think I was on your podcast and you mentioned you wanted to do a book and, and the, you know, th there was some aspect of what I was trying to do with, with other people, which led to tell us about how you see it from your perspective. So, well, I just want to say for everybody um, listening, Carol and I were in touch, some conversation we were having and you said, oh, have you seen the Hay House Writers Competition? And I said, yeah, 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 I have seen that. Yeah, I saw it advertised. And you said you were going to, you know, you'd signed well, up to it. Or you, you would I, well, I was it. helping another, another client. Yes, because I, yes. I like to self-publish. I didn't really intend to, to, to put yeah. it out there. But I could see yeah. that for you, with your yeah. background, that this, yeah. because everyone who who'd attended had a chance to put in their proposal. That's right. That's and, right. and so that and was the beginning. The and we we, talk, we talked about the title. You, you had a sparkle in yours. And I said, I really yes. think, you know, you should keep to what you do, awakening, uh, you yeah. know, your, what you're known for as your title. And yes. then, okay, then tell us what happened when you so did then, it. Um, so the reason why it was Sparkle in the title originally was because the process is in part three, and I know we'll go through the, the, the book, but in part three of my book is all of my healing processes that are in there. Part two is the channel guides piece and lots of healing processes. And part one is, is my story. But um, part three was actually called Sparkle to Success. That was a program I used to run. Yeah. So we were, yeah, so we were having that conversation. So that's why Sparkle came in to to me about that. Yeah, because so, yeah, yeah. one of my one of the things I love to do is to speak to someone and then find the gold in what could be their book. Tell us about what happened when you did propose um, to her. So, you know, you have your idea. I knew I wanted this book to be out in the world, but I wanted it to be out in the world. So, as I said at the start, so just another avenue for people to heal themselves. You know, I have a YouTube channel, I do all of that stuff and I have a, a following. But I thought, how amazing if people could have a physical book, an audio book, a Kindle book, whatever they need, or however they choose that medium to read and to heal. And so I just knew that it had to happen and I didn't know how it was going to happen. And then obviously, um, speak to Carol, I signed up to that that workshop, which was the October, I think. October. That's right. Number 19, was it, or 20? I can't remember I think now. it was 20. It was Must 20 because I was in San Diego in 19. That's right, yeah. 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 So it was um, October 20. Just basically said, right, okay, how am I going to do this? So I actually got uh, somebody to help me, a professional editor, yes. to help me with the proposal. And the proposal, if you're listening to this, the proposal was so helpful in the end because it was 12,000 words that I eventually proposed to Hay House, to the competition. And that was so helpful when I actually came to write yeah. the book properly yeah. because I took aspects of it that mm. were really helpful. But yeah, the proposal was the key. And I honestly believe that I won a publishing contract with Balboa Press, which is the sister company or brother company of <laughs> Hay House, because of that proposal yeah and of course yeah. the universe and I had a chat with Louise Hay as well <laughs> uh, who passed away obviously everyone knows but I had a chat with her and I said Louise if you want me to get this book out to the world help me to um, get a publishing contract and you know I just feel very honoured that yeah. they saw something in my proposal that they thought was going to really serve humanity and actually the CEO of Hay House um, wrote to me, you know, which was really lovely after it was published and said, congratulations, people have an idea of a book, but they very rarely follow mm. it through. And so that just really made my heart sing. Yeah, when, when yeah. Was... So, so you've come this whole new level with, with a book. So tell yeah. us, uh, let's dive into the book. You mentioned there are three parts, your own story. Where do you tell the story of the guides? Is that in part two? So part two is the channeling from the guides. Okay. I channeled that whole section in three days. And of course, I changed it, moved it around from the raw channeling. The key thing about that is it's actually encoded 
with healing. Mm -hmm. So as people are reading it, and I've had loads of people say to me, oh my God, I felt like there's energy inside me. What the guide said to me as they were channeling it was that every single word in my book is encoded with healing. So as people are reading it, they're actually receiving healing. And the guides take them through many different processes. They are channeling through for people to connect with their inner guidance, for people to heal themselves, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And they quite often um, will say uh, whichever process in the book that actually you feel drawn to, and they will note to some of the other fifth dimensional processes that I've created over the years, and they're in part three. So it, it kind of works really well. It, it goes hand in hand together where the guides are really helping us, but also we're healing on an inner child level um, with the processes which, in the book at the back. Which yeah. is where some people need to start. And yes. then are you are you saying that then they, they will open up in, in their quiet time, in their meditation, to yes. their team and to, to their own channeled information? Because I know there are writers, and we're talking as well to writers, who believe mm. that when they sit down, sometimes they can invoke this channel. Julia, Julia Cameron is, is one of them, as you know, her, the artist's web book. And there must be others who, who something's coming through them. And I try and do that with my work. I try and ask yeah. to be a channel for what the words that need Absolutely. to come. And yeah. then, of course, we can get our editor and, you know, proofreaders, etc. So because we're good at what we do. You know, yeah. like we're good at what we do. And I think it's really important to honour that we're good at what we do and somebody else is an expert at what they do. Yes, and so yes. you, then you get that expert to assist you on that journey. But yeah, talking of the channel. So basically, um, and going back to what you asked, to, to, as people read it, do they start to heal and then connect? Yes, definitely. But also they start to notice different opportunities come into their life. So as we heal our, if you imagine it like a radio wave, we are a particular radio wave. So we are emitting that radio wave out to the world. So we get back that reflection of that frequency. So mm -hmm. what we can do by doing this work, you know, by healing our inner frequency, we're actually shifting our frequency in the outer world as well. We get back a reflection of our mirror. Let's call it a mirror. Yeah. So we are this mirror, it reflects out, and we get back that reflection of that mirror. So we take responsibility. And part of um, the book I really wanted for people to understand is that we get our reflection. So it's our responsibility then to actually tweak and heal and look at our own reflection and mm -hmm. not blame someone else that someone's done us wrong, which is really a great thing because as we do that, any opportunity that comes into our life, we might say it's bad, we might say it's good, we can say, oh, wow, that's interesting. I wonder how mm. I attracted that. So could you give us a story of either yourself or someone who was blown away with a practising some I aspect think, of this, how their lives change. Yeah, think of a couple of really incredible ones where people come to me and they have um, maybe a physical disease. And this one particular lady came to me, it was a couple of years ago, and she had a particular diagnosis and she tried everything. And so we worked together by healing the parts of her that she hadn't looked at. And in her case, it was childhood trauma. Uh, you know, everything going for her. She used to run, she had a healthy diet, but the thing she hadn't done was worked with the trauma. Now, this trauma had come from witnessing her mum with partners who had abused her. Mm -hmm. So she'd seen this, she'd internalised that in the sense that she was unworthy as a woman, etc. She lost all her power. So we worked with, um, and her diagnosis was in a female area of her body so it made sense that that's mm. why it was showing up she worked with that she healed that and what happened because I work with my guides and I'm listening the whole time so I'm seeing into the body but I'm listening to what my guides are saying to her what they were saying to me was you're going to look back on this and this is your journey of going home now they didn't mean going home to spirit they meant going home, coming home to who she was. And now when I look at her, she has, well, she's just about to write her book, She, um, which is amazing. <laughs> I'll put her in contact with you, Carol. Um, she's about to write her book. She has her own practice, healing practice. 
She has a blog. She, I'm watching this beautiful soul unfold. And what happens is I see this all the time. Mm. I see people come off medication they've been on for like 20 years. I see people um, heal their relationships. You know, one one lady um, during the pandemic time, people have different beliefs, right? And so um, her husband chose a different way of looking at it. And she chose uh, um, her own way of looking at the pandemic. It was at the point where they were basically going to split up because mm. they had the experience of one, deciding that what was going on in the world was they believed on that level and she didn't believe that. She believed a complete, completely different thing. So they were just about to split up. So we did this process called Cutting the Ties That Bind. It's actually in my book and with forgiveness. And her relationship not only transformed where they could actually speak about it, but they could agree that each one had a different view and that was fine. But her relationships with her family changed. So she get, went to... Um, sort of events and parties where she'd normally been seen as the black sheep of the family. And actually she was told how important she was, how loved she was. And this is a prime example of as we heal our inner self and cut these, you know, cords and these lifetimes mm. and so on, we then reflect a different experience back. And so she now has her own um, jewelry business and so on. So a spiritual jewelry business. And so I'm watching this happen all the time, Carol. So to me, mm. this is profound healing. And it is when people heal these deep parts of them that have held them back for so long. Mm. Well, as you know, I, I, that, that has been my part the last 20 years, doing exactly yeah. something similar, helping people and seeing them blossom when yeah. they when they. Yeah release past trauma release beliefs yeah. and it's it's an amazing wonderful thing but it's good to hear you have a, a different pathway to doing it in yes. that you maybe I am channeling I, f I feel I'm just intuitive and I know that I'm being guided by grace <laughs> but I don't I don't say to people I'm channeling galactic talking of which who mm -hmm. is the galactic guides who are they I've heard you well, mention a range and I'm, I'm <laughs> curious <laughs> For me, <laughs> yeah. so the first ones to come in with the Palladian Collective, and they are the, the ones that work with me are the Ninth Dimensional uh, Palladian Collective, and they come in with tones and frequency, and they heal resentment of mother, they heal resentment held in the heart field, and they balance the love vibration within our heart. So I love working with them. They were the first ones that came in. We have um, the Arcturian Council, so from Arcturus, and they come in and heal old stories. So old lifetimes, I get, get shown these tablets of lifetimes with people held in the Akashic Records. So I see those healed and they come in with light language. So a, a language that is of the light. So mm. not just tones, but with language. Mother Mary works with me. She comes in and it's almost like singing a beautiful song to the inner child and usually the baby self. Mm. So quite often she'll come in and help with baby growing in the womb being born and so on, like the suffering child. Mm -hmm. um, Joshua pops in sometimes because um, he kind of works quite closely with her and he works with um, the forgiveness piece and the surrender piece. With my galactic uh, chambers, he's often in the crystal galactic chambers as well. Who did out. you say? Just repeat that. Jesus. Joshua. Joshua. Jesus, yeah. Joshua. The newest team are the Syrian High Council. Okay. Now the Syrian High Council come in as like a purpley, magenta color with me I see them to the right they're coming to the right and they come in and they speak to the soul so they come in with their light language you'll find that on my um five minute frequency tune up on my youtube channel which is just my name susan kennard and yes. every friday morning i um, a new video goes out with with the galactics do, do you close your eyes and channel it or or are you listening and then speak them. I can see them and I can hear the language before it comes in and then I speak it. And, yeah, Please. often I've got my eyes closed. Continue. Is there anyone else <laughs> in sure. this merry um, band of galactics? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not being funny. I'm just saying it sounds, yeah, sure. it sounds no, fun, sure. actually. They're my friends. They, they're yeah. pretty good. I'm not going to stack them just yet. But <laughs> so, so we have our Council of Light. So we all have our, our council. 
and our Council of Light have been traveling with us through all of our lifetimes. Um, but we have different guides that come in and help us depending on what we're doing at that time on our mission. OK, so some people will talk about guides, um, Egyptian guides, Chinese guides, etc., etc., and angelic frequencies. I just at the moment work a lot with the galactic. So I work with this frequency that's coming in to assist ascension. Mm -hmm. um, but my frequency had to be at that frequency for them to match me. So it's not that we stop healing ourselves. Mm -hmm. We just keep on refining and fine tuning our frequency. And as we do that, then other guides will come in and assist us. So there are many, uh, ca the Council of Light step in. Um, Ashtar from Ashtar Command um, comes in and really oversees many of the galactic uh, frequencies and Mikhail Zadak, I haven't forgotten you, Mikhail Zadak, I've just been reminded. Um, Mikhail Zadak is the overseer of the universe. And when he comes in, and he comes in the galactic chambers as well, when he comes in, he holds out his book of codes. And essentially, he channels through, through me, an activation for your mission. So I, I love that. I love that when he comes through, because mm -hmm. he really is activating people to why they're really here. I'm, so I'm going to throw a spanner in this whole conversation, <laughs> which I Go can just it. hear my listeners asking, where does God come into this? Absolutely. I see God, grace, source, creator as one. So I see that all of these beings that work with me are a part of God as you are a part of God, as I am a part of God. So yes. we are all part of the one incredible essence creator and we are just here as if you see it as a spark of light of god mm -hmm. so a spark of light of creator and we are almost like the children like the little mm -hmm. the little ones of creator so that's kind of quite often the guides will say to me tis done child and i feel like i'm given that so that i know like if i ask for anyone or for myself are here, tis done. And it's almost like it's granted, you know, mm. ask and it is given. And it's mm. almost like, of course, child. Yeah. So it's like that kind of you are a child of God. Yes, yes. That's how I see it. Yes. I don't see it in religion. I don't see it, although I was brought up religiously, yeah. I don't see it that way. And there's no judgment with any of that. But it, this is the way I see it and the way that my guides give it to me. Well, I think that's very, very helpful for anyone who has that question. Next, what, what are the galactic chambers? I heard you mention those. So I, I will talk about this. I also talk about what goes with my book or separate to my book is the Journal of Insight. So when we're working with our guides or we're trying to listen to the next steps in our life. And I know that a lot of people have going through a really difficult time. You know, we're recording this in 2022, at the end of 22. The end, yeah. And it, you know, lots of people are really struggling. And one of the key things I find is that having my trust and my connection to my guides, it allows me to feel completely at ease with anything find I don't have to plan or I don't feel I have to plan because I know that everything always works out. And even in times when it was really difficult, when I had the two babies, they're now teenagers, but when I was a single parent with two babies, I still knew because I'd worked with my guides, I still knew that I was always looked after and I would look back and say, wow, this is it. So I created, um, with the help of the guides, a journal of insight and it goes along with the book. It's easy then. You've got the Journal of Insight, you can have it in your hand and daily you can journal and listen to what the guides are trying to say to you mm. or trying to convey to you. And so it's like almost like um, a focus for you. And it's got a beautiful message in it from the guides, a channeled message, and it's encoded with healing from the guides. So as you sit with your Journal of Insight, the guides automatically come close to you. It's almost like an intention. I created it with the love of the guide so that everyone that has one has mm. this experience so i'm excited about that i'm really excited about that and i and i believe you're also recording your book you're going to have an audio there'll be an audio version as well the book is the book is recorded um with my voice 
the guide's frequency comes through me when I speak. So I needed to record it and not an actor. Before, you know, we move maybe to the end of this interview, would you be willing Mm. to share one of the tools that you think would maybe help people who want to write a book or Mm, people, uh, you know, who face, you know, thinking what's ahead of me for 2023? which I'd like to ask you to finish on, but is there... So I have uh, the Galactic Crystal Healing Chambers, which were channeled from um, Atlantis and so on from the Galactics as well. And there's one called Mission. And so people can find that on my website, um, which I'm sure you'll you'll put um, mm, in the notes. I will, but it's, yes. It's Susan Kenard.co.uk. C-O. UK. UK, yeah. Uh. Um, and uh, you can step into the Galactic Chamber. It's remote, once you've stepped into it, once you've signed up to it, it's remote. So basically, as soon as you sign up to it, you're in it. And it allows you to kind of let go of how is this going to happen? So that's a really good thing to do. And there's a whole page of galactic chambers that people can look for, animals and children, relationships, you name it. They're so all so on that. are you involved in those? Or- I channeled them. So you channeled, I channeled them. But once you're in the galactic chamber, because you've bought a, yeah. a, a month pass. Yeah. Who who's is there any other feedback or guidance? It is literally working for you twenty four seven, and you can stay in it for as long as you want to stay in it. So you can stop the subscription at any time. Just press the button okay. and say I'm done. So yeah, that's really good. The other thing that's coming to me is there's an amazing process in my um, book and my awaken the light within. Is that what I'd like you to share? Something yeah. From you. Um, there's an amazing process called the emotional wall. Now, okay. what the emotional wall does is allows people to, if you could just imagine there's a wall in front of you, like just imagine, yes. most people could imagine that, right? And then I can't do the whole process, but I can give you a snippet of how it works. Yes. And essentially that wall represents what stops you. So you imagine you're standing behind it. I take you through it in detail in the book. And on the audio, of course, you're going to actually hear me taking you through it. But essentially, you're, you're standing behind the wall and you may get a sense of what's on the other side of the wall. You may not. And then there's a child standing next to you. And that child standing next to you is your inner child. And that's the piece where you felt disconnected. Mm-hmm. You never are disconnected to source, but you felt it. And so what we do is we heal that child and that child gets reunited into you. So the integration happens and the wall isn't there anymore and you step forward into your future. Okay, it's so powerful and it stops you from thinking why. You know, the wall represents the fear or the wall represents whatever you're you're dealing with at the time. I feel I won't be accepted. I'm going to be judged. I'm not good enough, whatever it might be. So you access the process from the perspective of the unwanted emotion. But I take you through all of that anyway mm. in detail. Mm. And it is fascinating what happens because we don't need to know. Our soul knows already what it okay. is and our inner child knows that part as well. What do your guides <laughs> tell us about <laughs> the way this year has gone and how it's going to be oh, in 2023? Okay. But give me some um, idea of how you feel our uh, world is going, the things that are facing us in 2023. I, I truly believe, and obviously my guides are talking to me all the time. I could channel something if you want. Do. Okay, all right. okay let's, let's see. I'd love that. It's in. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of fun, isn't it? Okay, so. Okay, so they're saying, um, so this is actually the Syrians, but they're not going to come in light language because then everybody can understand the words. So, They're saying that the great awakening that has happened on our planet has, there there were no mistakes with this great awakening that we were meant to experience uh, the seemingly perceived division of two groups. And so as we um, perceive this uh, division of two groups, it allows us to heal our fears, our judgment, our story. And we tried to do this in Atlantean times. However, we did not succeed. And we chose this time to come and bring incredible expansion as we create this new golden earth. As we create this new golden earth, we are the conduit of light that comes to experience abundance, freedom, and creating with source creator, all that is, as you call them, 
to allow you to manifest and create on your journey of your mission. You will see as we step into, as you see on your timeline uh, of the 2223, you will see that the frequency of this is going to show you that the golden earth is the the brighter side of the earth. And there will still be some that stay in the shadow of the earth. However, we see the golden earth as brighter. And we see that those of you that are listening to this at this time will be stepping more fully into, as you call it on earth, the ascension frequency, the ascension pathway. One sec. Okay, what else? Thank you. They're saying that as we step more fully into this frequency of the ascension pathway and we are more fully on our chosen mission, we are able to connect more deeply, more clearly with those that are assisting us at this time. In fact, some of you will actually visually see those that are assisting us. Thank you. They're saying to say, you are not on your own, you were never on your own, and you chose to be here at this time, to awaken, to remember, and to assist those on their journey of awakening. Mm -hmm. And so it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's beautiful. And so much uh, related to your book and to who you are and, and to this, this podcast interview. They show it to me as well. I can see it clairvoyantly. So as they were speaking, I could see the golden earth, which is where we're really stepped. Mm. We're like teetering on the edge of it. We're like literally almost in. And there will be still the shadow and there yes. will be lots leaving um, this planet. And, and that is something that from a human perspective, we don't want to see. However, that was all part of the plan. Yeah. Well, thank mm -hmm. you. So, Susan, just tell us one more time the name of your book. I will put it in the show notes and the your website. Sure. So the book is called Awaken the Light Within Your Heart. My name is Susan Kennard and my website is susankennard.co.uk. Thank you. Thanks for joining me on today's podcast. Want a free gift to inspire you further on your book writing adventure? My free checklist, five book hook tips to kickstart your book writing journey will help you get clarity on the key essentials to make your book a winner. Download it at writethebookinsideyou.com forward slash free gift. The links are in the show notes. Until next time, a big virtual hug and keep writing. <laughs>